Coming to the stage next, we have another very funny gentleman. Give it up for Mr. Chris Red. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I'm ready for this fucking month to be over. I hate April. It sucks. The weather sucks. It's cold again. What the fuck? But that was over. Lily, March and April, I find them to be the biggest prick teases you'll ever meet, you know? So, like, uh, oh no, I killed it. <laughs> Live! A lot! Oh, good. Resuscitation. Don't touch it again, dumbass. <laughs> two biggest prick teases you'll ever meet. They're like, uh, you know, March comes and April comes, they're like, uh, oh, hey, remember what 70 degrees feels like? Uh, hey, you like that, don't you? Yeah. It's nice not having to come out with a jacket, right? Yeah, yeah. Then go fuck yourself! <laughs> hey, hate hey, them. But it will get warmer. You know, May's coming along in the summer. We'll see all those wonderful travel commercials, you know, to go to exotic places like Mississippi and Idaho, yeah. And they have a lot of uh, travel commercials to go to Mexico. You know, they have that, that, that new slogan, you know, uh, come to Mexico, discover what you thought you knew. You know, and they have like subcategories that are like, you know, uh, like Mexico, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, they're like a, a cave. They can hold the Statue of Liberty, Mexico. You know, or uh, a church on the top of a hill, Mexico. But this when I think about it, when I think of Mexico, you know, what comes to my mind when I think of Mexico is, you know, a, a blonde American girl being abducted and used as a drug mule? Mexico. Uh, everybody can watch live TV? Yeah? yeah. All right, good, good. Otherwise, these jokes won't make any sense. Uh, I watch an exorbitant amount of uh, TV. In fact, so much that uh, I know the commercials not as well as I know the TV shows that I watch. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, uh, the boat, or not the boat, like the uh, shake weight commercial. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not talking about the female ones, though. You know, they're like, oh my god, feel the burn. Woo! Now, I'm talking about the men's ones, you know, the ones made by both legs. You know, the one where the guy looks like he's exercising and having an epileptic seizure. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Like, seriously, like, if one guy is behind that camera, like, watching that, turns to the bridge and going, man, this is a good commercial. <laughs> There's no sexual window. The window's missing at all. So, this is a kid. You know? And of course they have that, 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 that disclaimer, you know, saying, you know, if you don't feel it in your chest, abdomen, and arms, we'll send you a full refund. Motherfucker, if you don't feel that in your chest, abdomen, and arms, you jack off too much. If <laughs> <laughs> you reflect on what you do in your life, that shit is all you want to do in the morning. There's a Phillips uh, Lifeline Alert commercial, you know, they say, I'm hurt and I can't get out of the those things, you know, like, you know, they're like, uh, if you fall down, like, even if you've fallen down, we'll know that you've fallen down, even if you can't press that fucking button hanging around your neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they know you've fallen down? Uh, I think the thing, like, what, Santa Claus? It's like, you know, they know when you watch this thing. They know when you know when, they know when you've fallen down or not, and if your hip needs to be replaced, oh, so it's like mine, so it's like mine, so it's like mine, so it's like mine. They'll help your grandma not die like a turtle. <laughs> We also have uh, those, those wonderful fast food commercials. Uh, I, I particularly like the uh, McDonald's ones, especially for the chicken nuggets. The lights when they came out, they're like, you know, get a six piece chicken McNugget, now made with all white meat. Now made with all white meat? What the fuck was I eating before? No wonder my balls dropped in the fifth grade. I grow facial hair in the sixth. Goddamn! Like Jason Giambi juicing up on fucking poultry. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's another one there. The Enzyme commercials. I'm sure you've all seen these about the little blue pill that, you know, the, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> you a big dick, right? Make sure. Oh, my God. friends, so I need to make sure that he's coming along. Uh, but but the, the, the commercials are, are pretty funny, but what caught me recently uh, wasn't uh, the, the commercials itself, but was the new product that they have out. They now have a product, along with the pill that you can, that you can have, called the Enzyme Energy Drink. <laughs> That's where you can now drink Enzyme. And that got me thinking, like, what would be the slogan if they were just trying to push the drink? You know, like, en Enzyme Energy Drink. Get a big dick in a jip. <laughs> or, uh, drink it inside. It's a boner in a bottle. <laughs> yeah, I like that announcer voice that you hear on TV. You know, the, hi, I'm going to sell you shit you don't need. All right. It reminds me of the, what I like to call the Gucci trains on the subway. 
You know what I'm talking about. You know, the four, five, and six, the two and the E, that one three train that goes to East Harlem that's not as ghetto as the rest, you know? But you know that voice, the stand clear of the closing doors, please. <laughs> Out, they always have the woman's voice come on to tell you the nice shit. Like, you know, like she comes on, she's like, this stop is Happy Land. Next stop is Land of Glitter. The man's voice comes on, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> if you hold those doors open one more time, I'll rip your fucking arms off. <laughs> but you gotta think, like, that's a real guy's voice. Excuse me, that's a real guy's voice. Like, obviously they used a computer to, like, form the senses, but they sampled somebody's real voice. So obviously this guy's, like, a vocal talent or vocal actor or whatever. But, like, when he goes into auditions, does he tell people that? Does he, like, come in and, like, Hello, my name is, uh, Stephen Jenkins, and I'm the voice of the MTA. <laughs> or, like, when he picks his daughter up from school, you know, Sally, be careful of the closing door. <laughs> Next stop, your bitch ass whore of a mom's house. <laughs> Speaking of bitch ass whores, um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm newly single, uh, three months now, going from the breakup. Thank you, thank you. In the outside. Um, <laughs> but of course, being single, I've delved into the horrible depression of online dating. No. <laughs> Checked it out. I'm not actually online. Don't look me up. I'm not there. I just checked it out, you know. And I, and I saw things, you know, like J Day and you know Christian Mingle, you know, OK Cupid, or as I like to call it, I don't give a fuck what your name is. Let's just go have sex. Um, but then I came across this one uh, site called BlackPeopleMeet.com. Like literally, there is no getting around that site. This is not like black black and white people meet dot com or you know black and Hispanic people meet dot com. It's black motherfucking only people. We don't want no jungle fever motherfucking crackers on this site. Get the fuck off. Duck off. <laughs> but it got me thinking. Like, was there ever something like that for white people? Turned out there was. It was called a lynch mob. <laughs> We can never do that. We can never have a whitepeoplemeet.com. Like, that'd be the most racist shit ever. Like, what would be the slogans? Like, you know, whitepeoplemeet.com, start a rally. <laughs> or like, whitepeoplemeet.com, because as the saying goes, once you're white, you're always right. <laughs> Black people. Uh, since there's none here, fuck it. <laughs> No one's gonna shake, man. Uh, anyway, I'm originally from uh, Houston, Texas, uh, and uh, thank you. And uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, being that it's in Texas, it is actually very diverse. And uh, I grew up in a very diverse neighborhood. I was actually a minority as a white person, going to school and all that stuff. So when I moved here to New York, and I moved to, you know, you know I live in the, in the Washington Heights now, and before then I lived in Harlem, I really didn't have the, you know, the, that shock of diversity, you know? And I tell people, oh yeah, I live in Harlem. And you know, you tell your white friends, and they're like, oh, you live where? Oh my God, how are you still alive? Oh. But it's really not that bad. It's really not. West Side of Harlem is really great. The only thing you really have to worry about is Jehovah Witnesses waking you up at six in the morning. They the same fucking pamphlet they gave you last week, but whatever. But really, I had no problems living there, even as a white male, except for one day. I'm walking back to, to my uh, apartment. I lived on 149th between Amsterdam and Convent. I'm walking back to my apartment with my then girlfriend. And we're holding hands walking down the street. We just came from dinner. And, uh, you know, we're not even talking. We're just enjoying the night air and whatnot. So we're walking down Convent. And we pass, we, we see these two girls on a stoop. And they're sitting there and they're talking. We make zero eye contact, say absolutely nothing while we're walking towards and passing these two girls. But that was enough to make one girl flip her motherfucking shit. As we passed, she proceeded to say these very words. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I gotta say this. I gotta say, I gotta say this. Hey! Hey! Why you gotta live here, huh? Huh? Why you gotta live here, huh? Where the rest of us supposed to live, huh? Huh? Tell me that. Tell me that. Where the rest of us supposed to live, huh? You know what? Why don't you go back to where you came from? Why don't you go back to Ron Kankama? <laughs> and I guess I should have gotten mad. I should have turned around and been like, uh, hey, that's racist. This is a progressive neighborhood. <laughs> but really, the only thing that went through my mind during this whole altercation was, where the fuck is Ron Kankama? <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm Chris Wren. Thanks so much.